forward and we move forward and we are amazed at what he does. I am thankful for God in my life. He has been there even when I didn't know he was. He's never left my side. I'm thankful for my family and my family here at church. I'm also thankful that even during these trying times that we are still able to gather and minister to others, both our congregation and the community. Well, I'm thankful to be a part of a church where grace is taught and, and modeled and freely shared with one another. Well, I just want to express my gratitude this year for um, my wife, uh, for the, uh, that God spared her life through the COVID. But most importantly, I am supremely grateful that I have this church family here that we could lean on in this time. And for those that reached out to her in particular, sent letters and cards and drawings from the kids. Uh, it was all uh, really a, a great opportunity to express uh, encouragement to her, and I believe that that really helped to bring her through. So thank you so much, church family, for all that you've done for us. I'm so thankful for the way our church family encourages one another and prays for one another. This year has had many challenges, but it has been such a blessing to see the Lord work through the prayers of His people. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to serve and to minister to God's flock. I'm very thankful this year for my youth leaders. Their hard work, their dedication, and their commitment has been amazing, especially this year where I've leaned on them so much. I'm also very grateful for our students and their parents and their support, their understanding, and their grace. Even when we do things that they don't agree with, they've still been very hospitable. I'm very thankful for our community, um, the fact that we can lean on each other here at church. You know, we're all going through different degrees of struggle and we have each other's back. And I'm extremely thankful for my wife. Her love, her commitment, and her support is unmatched. And there is no way that I could do anything without her. I am thankful for my church family and for the work that I have here and for the brothers and sisters in Christ that who love me and lift me up and encourage me in the ways that no one else can. I'm so thankful for the way the church has really borne each other's burdens over the last year. When I lost my day job in March, so many people came alongside our family, and helped us with prayers, food, and support. And I've seen the same thing happen to so many other people and families over this past year. I thank God for the way that He displays His love to us through His family. I remember what a fun thought it was that we were entering 2020 in January. Clear vision, this will be our year of clear vision. It hasn't quite turned out that way, but what is clear is the most amazing church body that we have here and that we're blessed to serve with. I am thankful for our teams that help week after week, that are flexible when we throw something new at them. So this year, I'm most thankful for our volunteers. Their service allowed us to open the doors so we could worship together. We could not do our jobs without them. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, happy Thanksgiving, East Auburn. And um, you certainly, as a church family, bring great joy to my heart. I'm so thankful for uh, your faithfulness to the Lord and to his body. And uh, in the last six to eight months, we have been through a ton together, but I have been so impressed and so blessed uh, by your faithfulness and dedication and flexibility. And uh, that brings great joy to your pastor's heart in this season of Thanksgiving. So I hope you have, a, have had a great Thanksgiving and um, I hope that we can continue to grow together in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you realize what a significant blessing you are to all of us. We're so grateful for you for being here, those in the parking lot that are joining us, those online that are joining us. You know, as we share in the love and life of Christ, this is a season where we can be thankful for the greatest gift that we could ever receive. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing some songs of gratitude and praise as we give you this. Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in 
Ere the winter storms begin, God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. All the world is God's own field, fruit unto His praise to yield. Wit and tares together sown, unto joy or sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. For the Lord our God shall come and shall take his harvest home. From his fields shall in that day all offenses purge away. Give his angels charge at last in the fire of tears to cast. But the fruitful ears to store in his garner evermore. And one day that will be us, amen, gathering in his house. To continue with give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give them. give thanks. Amen. We're going to continue. These guys here I'm, a pr I'm especially thankful for, for their dedication through all of this. Let's continue in worship. Morning, church. It's good to be with you this morning. We stand in the love of our God, of our Father. Amen. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. Amen. She no longer has a place to hide. to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past 
behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My faith doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My faith doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My faith doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Praise offering this morning. You will pray. You will pray for us. So give your right half to me. Yes. Church. 
together as a body, Lord, to worship you, to honor you, to praise you with the song this morning, Father. Lord, bless this service, Father. May you be glorified above all. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hey, welcome to East Auburn. Hey, welcome to East Auburn. My name is Jess and we are so thankful you could join us this weekend. If you are new or are joining us online, we would love to hear from you. Please fill out our online connect form. Here are the ministry updates for the week. Angel Tree will be available the weekend of November 28th and 29th. This ministry is a prison fellowship program that connects parents in prison with their children through the giving of Christmas gifts and the gospel. If you are interested, pick up an angel tag, buy a Christmas gift, and return it to the church on December 12th. The Silver Wings Holiday Dinner in December has been canceled, but they are still collecting gift cards for safe families. For more information, visit eabc.me. We will be having a quarterly business meeting on December 6th at 1 p.m. If you are a member of East Auburn, please sign up online. 
We need your help to ensure a quorum as we discuss church business and approve new members. If you are looking to learn more about the Bible and to grow in your faith, a new semester of Faith Bible Institute will be starting in January. Now is a great time to enroll. For more information, please visit fbiclass.com. If you are new here, have questions, or are in need of help, our church office is open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 to 3 on Saturdays, as well as during service times on Sundays. Tithes and offerings can be given online at eabc.me slash give or placed in the boxes as you leave the service. We want to pray with you. If you are in need of prayer, please follow the signs to the prayer room in room 117 after the service. Please wait for an usher to dismiss you at the end of the service. If you are a parent with children in Sunday school, you will be dismissed first to go and pick up your kids. While you wait, please be sure to gather all of your personal belongings. We encourage you to fellowship outside before you leave. Please make sure you sign up for church next weekend. Sign-ups are open starting every Sunday afternoon for the following weekend. Thanks for being here today. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning to you all. Welcome. Glad you came to worship with us this morning. My name is Brett. I'm one of the elders here. And uh, as we start at the beginning of the service, the staff and uh, what they are thankful for. And I just want to say on behalf of the church and the church leadership, how thankful we are for the staff and their families and their dedication to the church and their love for the Lord and uh, their service here. So I uh, just want to uh, recognize them and just say a big thank you to them. So continue to lift them up and, yeah, and pray for them and, uh, and all of our uh, ministry leaders and, and church volunteers. Uh, literally uh, hundreds of people, so we are thankful. And we're thankful for you coming and worshiping together. Um, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to you, and hopefully you all were able to, uh, as the psalmist says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So I hope that in this Thanksgiving season you were able to enter in and be thankful. Uh, I want to lead us in prayer. I want to remind us to be a church of prayer and to pray for one another. Uh, you know, lift each other up, encourage one another. And uh, if you know of needs, uh, certainly uh, share them with the church office that the, uh, the staff and the, uh, the leadership will, will know about that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do come before you today. We enter into your courts with thanksgiving, and we come in praising you today, Lord. We love because you first loved us, God. We're thankful for your uh, unconditional love and acceptance of us. And we're thankful that we can gather together here as a church, as a community of, of believers, and we can come and worship you, and we can come and open your word and glean wisdom from you, Father. We're thankful for this gathering and ask that your blessing on it. We're thankful for this church body. Lord, we ask uh, that you would come alongside and lift up and encourage. Holy Spirit, you would use us and empower us to be that encouragement to others. Those who are discouraged, those who are depressed and lonely at this time, I pray we would look to our families and to our neighbors and in our community that we could be a light, Lord, or we could be your light shining. Help, Lord, to, uh, just to give hope in this time. Father, help us to continue to lift one another up. Those who have, uh, are recovering from recent surgeries, Lord, I just ask your, uh, your blessing and your healing hand to be on them. Strengthen bodies and, uh, Lord, just bring healing and promote healing, Lord. We ask for those in uh, differing uh, parts of their journey with cancer, God, we just lift them up to you. Ask you would pour your grace out on them and your strength. Bring healing, Lord. We think of Ray Ames and, Lord, for Lori Bailey. And, Lord, just uh, bring encouragement and hope to them and uh, help them to feel your presence close, Father. And God, we ask for those who are grieving at this time, who have lost loved ones. Lord, we think of uh, Fish family, Lord, and the passing of Gail. And just ask for your hand of comfort and peace, Lord. Also for Kevin Gott and losing his dad and Father, strengthen and comfort and give only uh, the peace only you can give, Lord. 
Father, we ask that you would be with uh, Jason Matthews and that young family and his journey with ALS. And uh, Father, just uh, bless and strengthen and bring healing, help treatments to be effective, God. Father, we pray for Janet Brzezowski, Lord. It's been a, a long journey for her. And just ask, Father, that you would give her encouragement and you would give her healing and strength her, to her whole family, Lord. God, help us as a body to continue to lift one another up before you. Well, thank you for this time we can gather and ask, Lord, you would, uh, Father, as we open your word, that you would bless it and use it to apply it to our lives. And, Lord, that we would be, as I said, a light where you put us this week and ongoing, Lord. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise. Don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. your breath, following in pursuit of what you said, if it all reveals your nature, so will I, I can see your heart in everything you say, every painted sky, a canvas of your it all reveals your nature, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still fall shy, then we'll sing again. God of salvation, you chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. Light 
light of the world abandoned in darkness to die and as you speak a hundred billion failures disappear where you lost your life so I could find it if you left the grave behind you so will I I can see your heart in everything you've done every part designed in a work of art Gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love, then so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. I should have went through that door. Uh, good morning, church. How are you this morning? Good to see all of you. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what door I was going to go in so I could make it up here in time to preach. So glad to see you this morning. Glad that you're here. Oh, hi. Rest of our congregation over here. So a couple quick things. Nice to see daughters and dads. Isn't that nice? Our worship team with, uh, with Darren and Addie uh, doing a nice job in the worship team. And then Aaron and Laura uh, doing special music uh, together today. So uh, that was great. And uh, just want to make a quick note about our, our Thanksgiving offering. We usually are weeks ahead. We're a little behind Things have been a little chaotic in making decisions, but uh, we have two um, groups that we're focusing on for our, our Thanksgiving offering. The first one uh, is CareNet, and we feel like it's really, really important in this time period that we protect the unborn child, and CareNet does a beautiful job of that. And, um, and then the other um, group that we'd like to support and uh, some of their endeavors um, the Christian Civic League, and uh, they have been so helpful to us during this uh, pandemic time and, and representing the church uh, and giving us, uh, giving us counsel and advice. They do a great work uh, year after year, and um, so we're going to be supporting some of, the, uh, some of their endeavors we can't be involved with, but there's some endeavors that we can. And so um, if when you give, you'll notice it'll say Thanksgiving offering. It's the first on our list of things, ways that you can give. We're encouraging the fellowship um, to, um, you know, to direct uh, as much as they feel so led by the Spirit of God uh, to these two important um, uh, areas of giving. Um, well, this morning we're going to talk about the joy robber. What robs us of our joy? We're in the season of Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I often, um, I often struggle with really being thankful, especially on a daily basis. You know, at Thanksgiving, you know, we're supposed to, and so usually we can think of things that we're thankful for, things we, are, um, we, we thank God for. Uh, but I find on a daily basis, often I have things I'm thankful for and really, you know, uh, am thankful, of course, for Jesus and for my family and thankful for the blessings that God has given. Thanks, Rand. Thankful for water, cold water on a Sunday morning. Um, uh, but, you know, I have all those things I'm thankful for, but I have have other things that I struggle with. I, I have all these negative things that tend to outweigh the positive things, and they rob me of ha be, having a spirit of thanksgiving. And um, so 
Um, I, this morning, I want to talk about the things that keeps us from being thankful, from having what they often say, you know, when you get around those really positive, positive people, talk about, you know, you need to have that attitude of gratitude, and you feel like slapping them in Jesus' name, you know, like, you know, I'm not so happy right now, don't tell me to be happy, what's wrong, why aren't you smiling this morning? Or if they ask you how you are and you say you're doing okay, oh, just okay? Well, isn't okay okay? Okay is pretty good sometimes, that's good, you should see how bad I was a little bit ago. You know, you ever have someone like that? You just, you know, they, they bug you, you know? Well, uh, there are, you know, in our lives, there are what I call a, a, a joy robber, things that rob us of our joy. And we know that the biblical standard, according to texts like 1 Thessalonians 5 in verse 16, if you want to turn there with me this morning in Scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says, rejoice always. It's kind of a high standard. How can I rejoice always? And it gives a little help in the next verse. It says, you know, pray without ceasing. So I need to start praying to help me rejoice always. But then it says again in verse 18, uh, in everything give thanks. So the standard is high that we're to be thankful. And this morning we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, why we struggle with that. Your struggle and my struggle might not be the same. Your struggle might be in the area of health and wealth. You're not as healthy as you'd like to be. And so it kind of robs you daily of, of being thankful. Or it might be wealth and you don't have as much as you'd like to have. It might be in the area of gifts or talents or opportunities. It might be your genetic makeup. Genes. Not too long ago, and seeing my doctor, and we we're talking about a particular malady in health, something that I had, and I said, you know, well, what can I do about this? You know, diet, exercise, I always think I can fix this thing somehow. And he looked at me and just shook his head, and he said, it's just genetics catching up with you. And you're getting old. <laughs> something you can't change. might be the experiences you've had of life, it, uh, your family of origin, negative things that have, that, that have taken place. Most of us struggles with things. Something causes us to not be thankful. Well, I'm going to talk about what I believe is one of the root issues, at least I've identified in my life, and maybe you can relate to it. It's called in the Bible, coveting. Unhealthy comparison and contrast tends to rob us of the joy and rejoicing that God has called us to. In Exodus 20, verse 17, the, the tenth of the Ten Commandments makes it really clear that coveting is not pleasing to God. It's a sin. It says here, you shall not covet kind of clear. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Or for ladies, it would be your neighbor's husband. You shall not covet his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, which would be, in this case, your neighbor's John Deere. Or his donkey, that might be his side-by-side. -side, and you have an old three-wheeler. Um, and then it says, nor anything that is your neighbor. We're going to, this morning, look at the fact that God has created each and every one of us individually. You have your own DNA. You, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, as it says in Psalms 139, that He created and made you uniquely, individually. All of us have things we've been blessed with. We're going to see that all of us came into this world with absolutely nothing. We'll leave with nothing. Everything in between came from God. The Bible teaches that even every breath we breathe is a gift from God. 
So we need to be thankful for those things. Unhealthy comparison and contrast will rob us of appreciating what we do have. Maximizing it and enjoying it. By looking at what is our neighbor's. In Hebrews 13 verse 5, it says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. And Paul's going to tell us in a moment that this is a learned behavior. That this is a behavior that is not innate to our, our humanity, nor our being in Christ, our new, new nature. That these are, this contentment, this satisfaction, this lack of covetousness is something we learn. In 1 Timothy 6.8 it says, Having food and clothing... And let me just say, 99.9% .9 of those that attend our fellowship have these two basic things, the essentials. Having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. I'm not going to cause you to lie in church by having you all say amen to that this morning. But for almost everybody, and let me say that we throughout the year, we seek to help and we do help dozens and dozens of individuals and dozens of families that are struggling with these basic things. Tens of thousands of dollars is given through our deacons fund and through our helping hands ministry that helps those that might not have that and you don't need to, we won't, would never shame you and it's done, it's done in, uh, you know, in confidentiality, full confidentiality. Very private, very quietly. We want to help anybody that doesn't have the basics. Always have and always want to be there for the, them. And we can't always do what everybody wants us to do all the time, but we do as much as we possibly can. And it is the church's responsibility. Amen? Amen. To care for those that have need. The Bible says we're to do good to all, especially to those that are of the household of God. And so we want to do everything we can. We don't want, if there's anybody young or old that doesn't have adequate clothing, doesn't have adequate coats or adequate boots or gloves or hats, we have a fund in helping hands that will help you immediately with brand new, good, good stuff. Um, but with food and clothing, so what does that mean? That that means that 99.9% .9 of us should be this morning absolutely, completely content. That's what it says. Having food and clothing, but a covetous spirit causes me to continually not be satisfied with what I have and want more. And how do I know what I don't have is through the you know and you know all the electronics will help you see what you don't have and what you need it used to be that you walked around the mall people go why why go in the mall i don't know just walk around look around at stuff i don't have things i want um Having food and, uh, food and clothing therewith to be content paul says in philippians 4:11 this is a learned behavior not that I speak in regard to need, Paul says, for I've learned, that word learned, I've grown and matured in this area that whatever state I'm in, either to be abased or to abound, Paul said, whatever state I'm in, therein to be content. So we know that Job had an incredible handle on this as the scriptures records and gives testimony to Job trusting God with what he had given him and what he had taken. It's so loaded with good theology. We're going to read it again in Job 1 and verse 20. When Job, after he had lost crops, servants, livestock, and all of his children. Ten of them. All of them. In one day. He lost it all. 
I just want to make a quick note here. I'm not where Job was at yet. It doesn't take much to really cause me to have a bad attitude. Really. I mean, it has to do with really trite things that can cause me not to be thankful, not to be joyful, not to, be, not to rejoice. And I feel it's justified because of the day hasn't gone how I thought it was supposed to go. The vacation didn't go right. Something bad happened. And uh, Job had lost it all. (laughs) Just a quick note, there's one thing he kept, and I'm sure later on he was probably saying, hey God, what about... (laughs) (laughs) Because his his gal was a wretch, man. She was a a bummer. I'm glad I have a nice wife. (laughs) Job, uh, Job arose and tore his robe. He was in grief. Shaved his head. Fell to the ground. And worshipped. And he said, naked, naked came I from my mother's womb. All of us came with nothing. The happiest people in the world that I've known are people that have almost nothing. I've been around the world and traveled to different countries and spent time in villages with some of the poorest people in the world. They're the happiest. They're happy with just the basics. Food and raiment definitely makes them happy. He said, naked came I from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, everything we have comes from him. So suddenly you, you think, what do I have to be thankful for? A lot. You might not be as healthy and wealthy as someone else, but don't look at them. You have a life that God's given you. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. So, I guess I'm out of time. Um, So, the Scripture teaches us Not to look at others and what they have, but look at our lives and what God has blessed us with and be thankful for it. Everybody's measure of life, health, wealth, blessings, opportunities is different. But God loves you and knows you and has blessed you and I. And we need to think about our attitude of gratitude of being thankful for the things that he has given us. Lord, um, help us to be thankful for what you have given us. Have true joy. The Lord gives. The Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy Spirit, take the Word of God. Help us to apply it to our lives and be the bright lights you've called us to be. How greedy and how covetous we become. Demanding more out of life than God, you have sovereignly, providentially determined for us to have. Help us to trust you. Holy Spirit, radically change us. Teach us to be thankful. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll be dismissed in just a moment. God bless you and hope you have a great week. Thank you.